Hello, I'm Georgia Churchill, the storyteller, telling the old tales that happened long ago. About 300 years ago, folks in England wanted to sail across the Atlantic Ocean in those little wooden ships that they had way back then to the east coast of North America. And some of them moved down into what we now call Tennessee and Kentucky, steep hills with streams and narrow valleys and lots of forest. The people who lived there brought their um, stories from England that they had heard when they were children with them inside their heads and started making up new stories to go along with this new country they were living in. They loved the make-believe character of Jack and made up all kinds of stories about him. I'm going to tell you about Jack and the Black Bull. Now you know about Jack, who cut down the beanstalk and killed the giant. That happened in England. And shortly after the giant had died, Jack's mama met a widower, a man whose wife had died, with two sons named Tom and Will. So then Jack had a new family, he and his mama, a new daddy, and two brothers. This family wanted to leave England and go over to the English colonies in North America, but it's expensive. It was expensive to buy tickets passage on those little wooden ships. But there happened to be a farmer and his wife and three daughters who lived already in the English colony in North America, and they wished they had a boy to help them work on the farm. And so, I don't know how the arrangements were made, but it was agreed that Jack would go over and work on the man's farm. And uh, the man liked Jack real well, but the old woman, what was the matter with her, but she just didn't like Jack at all. She didn't even want to feed him. So in the morning, when Jack was doing the milking, that's when she'd fix breakfast for her daughters, her three daughters, and her husband. So Jack almost never got any breakfast, and then they had their biggest meal, their dinner, in the middle of the day, and it was the custom to ring a big bell or something so that everyone who was working around on the farm would know to come in to dinner, but she never rang the bell. So Jack never knew when dinner was being made and served. And then in the evening, when supper, the little evening meal was being made, she made that while Jack was doing the evening milking. Well, poor old Jack, he was hardly ever getting anything to eat at all, and he was getting skinny and weak. One day he was walking up a hill trying to get to the pasture where the cows were when he just fell down. He just couldn't even get up. There was a big black bull in the next pasture, and he saw Jack. He jumped over the fence and ambled over to Jack and lay down next to him and he said, No, what's the matter, Jack? Oh, that old woman, she just hates me and she never feeds me nothing. I'm getting so weak I can't even walk up this hill. Well, no, Jack, we can't let that happen, can we? Listen, Jack. You unscrew one of my horns. Well, Jack unscrewed one of the black bull's horns and now shake it, Jack. And when Jack shook the horn, why, a little pone, a little bread fell out. It was as though it had just been freshly made. We'd probably call them rolls today. But uh, they called them pones back then, the little breads. Anyway, it was all fresh and golden brownie on the outside, and it smelled so good. Well, Jack just stuffed it in his mouth and chomped it right down. He was so hungry. And when he shook the horn again, another little pone fell out. And, oh, my goodness, <laughs> Jack just ate pones as fast as he could. And then the bull said, No, Jack. You unscrew my other horn and be careful, because when you hold it up to your mouth, you'll get a nice drink of fresh milk. 
And that's just what happened. When Jack unscrewed the second horn and held it up to his mouth, he got a nice drink of milk. Well, my goodness, the black bull was feeding Jack several times a day. Jack was eating pones, freshly baked pones somehow, and drinking fresh milk, and well, he got plump. And one day, the old woman, the farmer's wife, said to her daughters, well, I just can't understand how Jack's getting plump when I never feed him nothing. You, she said to the oldest gal, said, you go on up and you hide behind some bushes and you spy on Jack and you see what he's doing to get so plump. Well, now this oldest gal, she didn't have but one eye, but she went on up in the bushes and she was peeking out watching Jack. But Jack, he seen her. We'd say saw nowadays, but in those days, they didn't have those all those rules for good English. Jack, he seen her, and he got out his little fiddle, his little violin, and he played sleepy music until that gal's eyelid just drooped down. And then Jack ate his pones and his milk. Well... When the gal went down, she said to her mom, Mama, I couldn't see nothing that Jack was doing to get plump. So the next day, the old woman sent her second gal up. This gal had two regular eyes, and she hid behind the bushes, and she was peeking out. But Jack seen her. He got out his little fiddle, and he played sleepy music until both those eyelids dropped on down. And then Jack ate his pones and his milk. And when the second daughter went down, she said, Mama, I couldn't see Jack doing nothing to make him so plump. So the next day, the third gal went up to spy on Jack. Now she had three eyes, one in the middle of her forehead. Well, Jack seen her all right, and he started playing his little fiddle, but, oh my goodness, he'd get two eyelids drooping down, but there was always one eyelid up. Uh, and finally, he thought he had all three of them drooping down so he could eat his pones and drink his milk, but one of them eyelids was only halfway down. And when that gal went down, she said, Mama, Jack's eating pones and drinking milk out of that big black bull's horns. That's how he's getting plump. Well, when the mama heard that, she said to her husband, Husband, I want to eat the melt from that big black bull. A melt. I have to tell you what a melt is. Well, uh, it's right next to the liver in us. I don't know how things are arranged inside bovines, cows, and bulls, but our liver's over here, and the melt's right here. And you know how liver is kind of soft? It's not like regular meat. Well, a melt even seems to be softer. It has to do with keeping us healthy. It works with our immune system. And I've never eaten a melt, uh, but anyway, they used to. Uh, we call them spleens nowadays. But anyway, the old woman said, Husband, I want to eat the melt from that big black bull. And he said, No, I don't want to kill that big black bull. He's a good bull. I got some little old bulls. You can have the melt from them. She says, No, I only want the melt from that big black bull. And she kept on until he finally agreed. Well, Jack heard about it. And he went to tell his big black bull. And the black bull said, Well, no, Jack, we can't let her kill me, can we? Now, when she's ready to kill me, she's going to call me down the house. And she's going to be real nice and sweet to me. And tell you to take the big sledgehammer and knock me between the eyes to kill me. Well, don't you do it, Jack. You take that sledgehammer and you knock her down and then you jump on my back and we'll hightail it out of here. And that's just what happened. When the old woman was ready, she said, Oh, black bull. And she had a handful of salt for the black bull to lick. 
I don't know why they like to lick salt, but deer like to lick salt too. Anyway, there was a black bull licking the salt, and she was petting his neck real nice, and she said, Now, Jack, you go get the sledgehammer, and you hit him real high between the eyes. Well, Jack got the sledgehammer all right. But he whacked that old woman on her legs and she fell down and she couldn't get back up. Jack dropped the sledgehammer and he ran and jumped on the back of the black bull and they hightailed it out of there with the black bull's tail sticking way up in the air. And off they went to live together. Well, they lived a real nice life, Jack and that black bull. Every day, you know, Jack would eat pones and drink fresh milk. And the black bull had plenty of grass, and he'd drink from the streams. At night, the black bull would lie down, and Jack would snuggle up against his tummy, and so they slept warm and comfy. But one morning, after Jack had had his pones and milk, and the bull had eaten his grass and gone off to get a drink from the stream, oh, oh, there were blue bubbles come bubbling up from the water. And Black Bull said, Oh, Jack, this isn't good. A blue bull's going to come fight me this afternoon. Now, I'm pretty strong, and I'm pretty sure I can beat him. But when he comes, Jack, you climb up in the tree so you don't get trampled. Well, sure enough. That afternoon, a big blue bull come. He's snorting and pawing the ground and bellowing and sticking his tail straight out. And the black bull, he snorts and paws and sticks his tail straight out too. And then they go at each other, head to head, pushing each other round and round, up and down the hills until the black bull got his horns caught around the blue bull's horns just right. And he twisted and broke the blue bull's neck. Jack come down from the tree, he says, whoa, black bull, you sure are a good fighter. Why, yes, thank you, Jack. And they wandered upstream a while until they come to another good place to live. Well, the next morning, Jack had his pones and milk and the blue bull had eaten his grass and he'd went to the stream to take a drink, but, Oh, now there were red bubbles come bubbling up. And the black bull said, Oh, Jack, this means trouble. I mean, a big red bull is going to come fight me this afternoon, and I'm kind of tuckered after yesterday's fight. Now, I think I can beat him. But you climb up in the tree so you can be safe. And sure enough, that afternoon, a big red bull come along. He's pawing and snorting and bellowing and sticking his tail straight out. But Black Bull, he just stood there. He was keeping all of his strength for the fight. And then they went at it, head to head, pushing each other back and forth and up and down the hills. But finally, Black Bull pushed the red bull over near the stream where the Earth had gotten wet and was slippery. And Red Bull fell down. And Black Bull gored him with his horns and killed him. Jack come down from the tree. Oh, Black Bull, you sure did a good job of fighting. I was worried there for a little while, but you're really strong and brave, aren't you? Yes, Jack, I believe I am. But uh, let's go upstream a little bit and find ourselves a place and let's just lie down and go to sleep because I'm pretty tired after that last fight. And that's what they done. The next morning, Jack had his pones and milk and the black bull had his grass. But when he went to the stream, white bubbles come bubbling up. And Black Bull says, oh, Jack, th this is not good. A, a white bull's going to come fight me this afternoon. And Jack, I'm awful tired after those last two fights. I, I don't know if I can beat the white bull. I'll try. I'll try real hard. But Jack, you climb up in the tree. And if I don't win, Jack, here's what I want you to do. I want you to take your 
sharp little folded knife and you cut the hide, the skin, right off the top of my tail and up along my back and then up along my neck between my horns and over my head and down to the end of my nose. That'll give you a strop. We'd call it a strap nowadays. That'll give you a strop. And then you cut off the horns and you take them with you wherever you go. And if you're ever in trouble, you just holler out, tie, strop, tie, beat, horns, beat. And they'll take care of you, Jack, even if I'm not there to do it. Oh, Black Bull, I sure do hope you win, because I really love you. When the White Bull came, Jack went up into the tree. And the Black Bull fought. He did his very best. He was so brave and strong. But he was just too tired after the last two fights, and, and the white bull killed him. Well, Jack waited up in the tree till the white bull had wandered off, and then he come down from the tree, and the tears are just pouring down his cheeks. He said, oh, black bull, I just love you so much, but I'll do just what you said. And Jack took his little folding knife, and he cut the hide, the skin, off of the top of the black bull's tail and then up along the black bull's back and up his neck and between his horns and over his head and down to the end of his nose. And that gave him a long black strop. And then he cut off black bull's horns and he set off all by himself. But while he was walking, he looked down at himself and, Oh, my land! He looked terrible. His shoes, the soles of his shoes were flapping. They were nearly worn out. And, and his breeches, his, his slacks were way too short. And his, oh my land, his sleeves were too short for his arms. And he was all raggedy and his clothes were full of holes. And he said, my land, I, I got to find me a job of work to buy myself some new clothes. So the next farm he come to, he knocked on the door. An old woman answered. She said, yes, what do you want? Well, I need a job of work, ma'am. I need to buy myself some new clothes. Well, can you take care of sheep? Yes, ma'am. I believe I can take care of sheep all right. All right, then. You can sleep in the loft up in the attic there during the night, and during the day you can take the sheep on up in the meadow and take care of them. So that's what Jack done. He was up in the meadow with them sheep on the first day when that old woman comes up the hills. Her elbows are just a-pumping, and she walks right up to Jack, and she says, What do you take? Hard grapes or sharp shins? Well, Jack didn't know what she was talking about, and all of a sudden, she grabbed him around the neck and started throttling him, choking him, and he managed to choke out, Die, strop, die, beat, horns, beat, and the strop uncoiled itself from around them horns and come flying through the air and wrapped around that old woman, and the horns started beating on her. Ah, oh, ah, oh, turn me loose, Jack. I'll, I'll, give you, I'll give you a poke of gold and silver. A poke? an old time you word for sack. So Jack turned her loose and sure enough when he got to the loft that night there was a poke full of twenty dollar gold pieces and one dollar silver pieces. Next day when Jack was up watching the sheep here comes that old woman again her elbows just a pumping and she says what do you take hard gripes or sharp shins and jack hollers hard gripes be dad tie strop tie beat horns beat and she's all tied up and was getting beat before she could do anything to jack and she says ow ooh, ah, turn me loose jack i'll give you a new suit of clothes and sure enough when he got to the loft that night there was a new suit of clothes hanging on a hanger from the rafters. Next day, Jack went up to watch over them sheep, and here comes that old woman. Oh, her elbows are just a-pumping, and Jack didn't even wait to hear what she was going to say. He just hollered out, Tie, strop, tie! Beat horns, beat! And she got tied up, and them horns were beating and beating on her, and he just let them beat for a while. And he said, What I want 
It's a nice little horse with a good saddle and brand new bridles and reins. And all right, all right, all right, Jack. And when Jack woke up the next morning, he looked out the loft window, and there was a pretty little mare, a girl horse, tied to the fence. And she had a real nice saddle and brand new bridles and reins. So Jack put on his new suit of clothes, took his poke of $20 gold pieces and $1 silver pieces, went down and rode that little mare right on out of there. And Jack lived high. He spent the night in hotels. He ate at restaurants until his gold and silver started giving out. And Jack figured he'd better get himself another job. Next time he come to a farm, he knocked on the door and a man answered, I'm looking for a job of work, sir. Well, can you take care of hogs? Great big pigs? I got a bunch of hogs up there in the orchard. They're eating the apples that fall down from the tree. Yes, sir, I think I can take care of hogs all right. Well, I'll tell you. Uh, what's your name, boy? Uh, Jack, I, uh, something's been taking my hogs during the, well, I don't know, they've just been disappearing, so, uh, I'd like you to keep a watch out for that, too. Well, Jack went on up the orchard, and he climbed up an apple tree. He was shaking apples down for the hogs, the great big pigs were snorting around down below the trees, eating apples, when all of a sudden, over the hill, comes this woman. Oh, man, but she was big. I mean, she was a giant. Jack, he was real quiet up there in the apple tree. And he watched that big giant woman going around, feeling the bellies of the hogs. She wanted the fattest one she could find. She finally found two that she liked, and she tucked one under each arm and started walking away. And Jack hollered out, Tie, drop, tie, beat, horns, beat. And that strup uncoiled itself and come flying through the air and wrapped itself around that giant woman. She had to drop the hogs. The horns were beating on her so hard she fell down the ground. Jack jumped out of the apple tree and he found a hickory switch. That's a long skinny stick from a hickory tree. And he started whipping her with a hickory switch and the pigs all come over and started tromping all over on top of her. Oh, Oh, she was hollering and screaming, you can imagine. And the farmer heard her. He come running up to see what in tarnation was going on. Well, when he seen what was going on, he run back down to his woodpile and got his axe. And he brought it back up and... What do you think? Yeah, he chopped off the giant woman's head. <laughs> and he filled Jack's poke back up with $20 gold pieces and $1 silver pieces. And by this time, Jack's family had come on over from England and bought a little farm for their own. So Jack decided he'd go work with his family. As far as I know, they're doing real well still. Thank you for watching this story. <laughs>